independent thoughts, independent life. This is Chad Benson. It's been one year, one year since the election. They're still battling it out in courts and they're trying to catch the person that stole it from Trump. All that being said, today in Virginia could be the first march to the Republicans gaining back some control and also the first roadmap in how you play the Trump card, if you will. So Terry McAuliffe, who a lot of people thought would walk into this, right? So here's a guy who's a former governor. The guy's got some national recognition, opportunity to step forward and to become governor again in a state that Biden won handily. But that was a year ago. And in a year, Biden has seen the coronavirus still continue to be a thing and the battle that's still there. Biden has seen inflation rise tremendously. Biden has seen supply chain issues. He's seen employment all over the place. He's had a bad run with immigration that you uh, look to say that immigration is bad would to say that you were actually addressing any of this. And yes, the Afghanistan thing, not uber popular at this moment in time, especially amongst independents. And as we all know, where and who are the most influential voters? You know, we're, we're trying to always figure out, okay, who's the most influential politician? You're doing it wrong, right? I'm going to play, you know, watch the uh, Moneyball. Well, Moneyball was all based on what? Buying runs. I can't replace this guy here who's going to hit 300, uh, you know, and he's going to hit 40 home runs and have 125 RBIs and all of those things. But what I can do is I can, because he's going to cost so much money, is I can take two or three guys, and I can buy his kind of productivity. Politics needs to change the way it's thinking. You need to figure out how you buy runs, how you buy votes. And I'm not talking about actually buying votes in a sense. I'm talking about how you influence the people that are the most important. And as we have seen over the last umpteen years, it is now the independents who are the most important. And right now, amongst independents, the Democrats are not doing well. So what do you try to do if you're the likes of Terry McAuliffe? Well, first and foremost, you play the diversity card. And I promise you, we've got to diversify our teacher base here in Virginia. 50% 50 of the students in Virginia schools, K-12, 50% are students of color, and yet 80% of the teachers are white. We all know what we have to do in a school to make everybody feel comfortable in school. So let's diversify. So here's what I'm going to do. We'll be the first state in America. If you'll teach for five years here in Virginia in a high-demand area, we will pay room, board, and tuition at any college, any university, any HBCU here in the Commonwealth of Virginia. Ah, look what he's doing there. See what he's doing there? He's playing the card. Because that's what you do. You play. So, so, so they're going to go out and play this game. But you, th- those are people. Let's be real. Black voters tend to be Democrats, right? So you're playing to a base that you already have, and unfortunately, that base for you is shrinking because you're not actually doing anything enough to keep them around because they're seeing through your BS. On the other side of things, you got to figure out how you tie that guy in with Trump because it's always about Trump and it's always about Biden. This thing's become about education. It's become about, you know, the cultural wars that we talk about all the time. So who do you hit? Well, if you're smart, you're going after the people in the middle. They voted for Trump, but now they voted for Biden. Now they're regretting their vote for Biden. They are seeing this chaos in craziness inside of their political world, and they're not happy with it. They are seeing this chaos and craziness inside of schools, and they're not happy with it. They are hearing the likes of McAuliffe say, it's not about you, parents. You guys shouldn't have any right to say anything about what's being taught in schools. So how do you go about it? You throw a bigger net. You throw a bigger net. 
That's what you do. How do you buy runs like the movie Moneyball? How do you put together something? It's not hard. I think what Youngkin has done is he's given a roadmap for a lot of people out there in the Republican Party to, for all intents and purposes, to be able to keep some of what Trump brings, and I'm talking about his group of voters, and at the same time keep enough distance away that you can grab other people, no matter how hard they're trying to paint the picture of you're his guy, you're his guy. And he's done that. He's made education a huge part of this. And at a time when education right now, who votes? Parents vote. And he's headed for the parents because he knows they're consistent when it comes to one thing, their kids' education, if they really care, and voting. This is about parents and Terry McAuliffe wanting to put government between parents and their children. And we in Virginia have a law that says parents have a fundamental right to make decisions with regards to their kids' education. I stand for it. Terry's against it. It's that clear. And voters are standing up and rejecting Terry McAuliffe. And he's just running the playbook that he wrote. He's the godfather of the modern-day Democratic Party. And he doesn't know what else to do other than introduce race into this. And he's ending his campaign on a racist dog whistle. He wants to ban critical race theory. Well, let me explain to you. It's never been taught in Virginia. It has. And you see it inside of your thing, inside of your education websites in Virginia. Now, has it been taught? Maybe not to the extent because we have a coronavirus. But you've got the perfect storm. And this is what I'm talking about right now. The place that you go is parents. Parents are disgruntled. They're pissed. They're upset. They're seeing a lot of this chaos in schools. They're feeling like it's becoming quite divisive. They're seeing what's going on in, you know, that they were demonized by the, you know, Department of Justice. Should they be looked at as domestic terrorists? You head in that direction. You're getting the votes you need of consistency where they show up. And those independent voters... You appeal to them, you'll have a huge chance. Across the country, you're seeing the biggest swath of people are jumping where? Independence. Here in Arizona now, I think independents lead the way. I think independents and Republicans are close, and the Democrats are a close second, third. But you're talking about now a large swath of people. You know you're going to get half of, even if they don't like you, The Republicans or Democrats, are they're not going to vote against you. They just won't vote. Some will hold their nose and vote for you. But those independents, that's where it's at. How do you get those people? I think they've done it here. I think he's done it in such a way with parents and the teachers and the way that McAuliffe's gone after this, on top of the fact that there's a lot of stink from the head down when it comes to the Democratic Party. Tonight could be an eye-opener. And regardless of what happens, and I don't even know if Youngkin's going to win, I wouldn't be surprised if he lost. He's painted a picture and a roadmap of how you can go, if you will, like the old baseball term, and buy runs. 323-538-2423, at Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. Tweet at us, text the program. If, that's a big if, if he wins, that is a huge shot across the bow, if you will of the Democrats and what could be coming. But so much of what now influences politics isn't the races where you know you're going to win. It is those other races. You control the parties, if you will. We talk about, oh, the party over here is controlled by this guy or that girl or you know that lady, whatever it is. Those two are always in the the seed of power because they don't really like Nancy Pelosi has nothing to worry about. It's the races that are close where you have to widen the tent and in widening the tent and buying the runs, getting more people in there. Those are the people that bring the power to the parties, not the people that have been established and will win. If you just put their name on the ballot and they don't even run an ad. 323-538-2423, 323-538-2423, at Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. Tweet at us, text the program. Uh, Joe Biden took a nap yesterday at the climate. Some, two things about that, all right? So you see the pictures. First, I'd have been bored to tears as well. Might have fallen asleep. 
Secondly, yes, he's a little long in the tooth. He's almost 79. You make all the jokes you want. Uh, but the reality is it is not a good look. Even if you want to take a nap, you probably shouldn't. I was wiping my eyes. I was just closing my eyes for a second. I'm sure it's dull as the day is long, and you don't want to be there. You want to say your things. By ensuring high standards, high standards for our projects, we can create infrastructure that lifts up communities. Yeah, 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 yeah. By insisting and responding to the needs of developing countries, rather than dictating projects from afar, we can deliver the greatest impact for those who need it the most. Yeah. 85 vehicles along with your plane and several others, 400 private jets. I'm sorry when we talk about, you know, what goes on with climate change. I mean, did you guys understand what this was about? You weren't trying to make the climate change. Oh, we're not trying to get it to go that direction? Guys, we've been doing it all wrong. <laughs> yeah, we should have zoomed this in. Ugh, so frustrating, so frustrating. But there he is. And we're going to talk about him going there. Yeah, you have to go do something like that. But he's still missing something big time. What is it? We shall discuss. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. Tweet at us. Text the program. Rough Greens, R-U-F-F-Greens.com slash Chad. Best thing I've ever done for my dog. Be giving out some bags. I had a couple extra bags that they had shipped me. And I gave a couple bags away to some people here that said, hey, Chad, does that stuff really, really work? I said, yeah, absolutely it does. And they're like, mm. I said, try it. One person's like, I cannot believe how good this stuff works. I said, right? So they've gone and ordered it. You can do the same. Vitamins, minerals, probiotics, omega 369, all this incredible stuff. It brings your dog's food to life. You don't have to change your dog's food. Just add this supplement to it and watch what happens. Helps with their joint pains, their digestive uh, tract, helps with their fur and everything about them. It gives them energy that you cannot believe. R-U-F-F-Greens.com slash Chad. Try it before you buy it. Cover the cost of shipping. They're going to send you a bag for free. It's a few bucks. How hard can that be? Roughgreens.com slash Chad. Or call 833-MY-DOG-77. 833-MY-DOG-77. Rough Greens makes any pet food better. Chad Benson Show. Set Chad straight. Text the show, 323-538-2423. That's 323-538-CHAD. Someone has to do it. Might as well be you. The Chad Benson Show. So, Biden's over there doing what he does, his apology tour. You know, Trump was bad. Trump was evil. Trump was, you know, the usual baloney. It's all his fault. Uh, the rest of us, like at this point, look, that's the last guy. Stop blaming the last guy. Right now, you need to be on top of this. Which is the average person's not sitting around going, hey, uh, you're talking a lot about climate, but I'm worried about, I don't know, 350 a gallon of gas, a buck more than I paid last year. And going to the grocery store, spending the same amount of money, but getting 30% less. And what's going on with the economy? I'm worried about that at this moment. Not saying what you're talking about is not important, but so much of it's about social, you know, justicing and, and you know, flag waving and cheering on as if you're doing something very, very heroic. When the reality is what you're doing really isn't doing too much. Because A, it's nature, and B, even though humans are having uh, a definitely, we've, we've got an impact on the environment, that would be stupid to say we're not, but the reality is China's doing what China does, India's doing what, and they're Joe, we're jumping on board, I get it, right? Russia's doing what Russia does, North Korea's doing what North Korea does, so Saudi Arabia's doing Saudi Arabia, all of those things are happening, and... While it sounds like, hey, it's great that we're doing this, if others don't get on board or they sign the thing, say, oh, yeah, we'll do the same thing, but then they go and don't do it, you guys are, you know, ringing the bell. Right now, most people care about today. How do I get through today? Climate change is already ravaging the world. We've heard from many speakers. 
It's not hypothetical. It's not a hypothetical threat. It's destroying people's lives and livelihoods and doing it every single day. It's costing our nations trillions of dollars. Well, why? Why is it costing our nations trillions of dollars? Like they're, they're here, it was like, did you see the damage hurricanes did? Yeah, well, don't build your house in a place where you know hurricanes are going to come. I have, new, I have news for you. If I know there's high tides and low tides, and I build my house when the tide moves out, and then the tide moves in, don't be shocked. Don't be shocked that the tide moves in. If you put your house next to the ocean where you know there are hurricanes, you're going to be in a situation where you're going to get hit by a hurricane. If you build your house on a fault line, don't be surprised when everything starts to shake. People talk about, man, hurricanes are getting worse. No, they're not. They're not getting worse. They're not increasing. Negligible in the power, uh, you know, across the board on what you're seeing. Negligible. Well, the damage is more. Yes, because we build our houses there. hundred years ago, nobody lived there. So if a hurricane rolled through and nobody was there, guess how much damage it did? None. Oh, yeah, I never thought of that. It's a great way to scare people. It's a great way to raise money. It's a great way to do a lot of things that governments enjoy doing, of which is grab power. But at the end of the day, is it really doing a ton of stuff? No, it's not. I mean, you know, Greta would be like, how dare you? You're not doing anything. You're still ruining my life. We get it. But back home, people are looking around going, I feel like you care more about a lot of these social justice things do than, than fixing what's going on right here. And you can't fix everything, but at least act like you're paying attention and you care. Chad Benson Show. Chad Benson Show. Independent thoughts, independent life. This is Chad Benson. A uh, big, ginormous race tonight in Virginia. Is there a, a blueprint of how to take the best of some of what Trump offered and separate that from the chaos, the craziness, the reality show TV? Glenn Youngkin may have done it. He may have done it. Now, I don't know if he's going to win tonight, but... Either way, he has painted a picture and given everybody a roadmap of how that you can take some of what Trump offered. Because there was a lot of stuff out there. And I'm not talking about the chaos and craziness. Everybody take a step back from that. Stop living in a world of emotion for a moment. And say, okay, Trump was pretty damn good on the economy. Let's not pretend that he wasn't. He was. He was. Yeah, but he was horrible. Yeah, okay. Okay, I, I get it. He was a horrible person. We we all get that. I'm not talking about his personality. I'm not. Uh, he was pretty good at the economy. People care about that. It's always the economy stupid. Always. Always the economy stupid. He didn't get us in any wars. Tried to get us out of some stuff. But as we all know, that's difficult. And it's fraught with its own dangers. But he didn't get us in anything, which is always nice. <laughs> Because very rarely do we have a president go, well, that guy didn't get us into something, which is a good thing. He tried with immigration, which is, again, fraught with danger and fraught with its own pitfalls and minds and issues. And while he, in one case, which was ridiculous, we can all agree with that, with the separation of children and parents, at the end of the day, 
he tried to address something that nobody else wants to address on either side, and they've ignored it for years. Well, that's kind of true. I mean, they did kind of ignore it for years. And now look at what we have. It's a debacle. Don't tell me that Biden's got a plan. He has zero plan. His plan was, let's see how many people we can get, uh, you know, legally here and give them a pathway to citizenship, and we'll go from there. That's not a plan. That's a hot mess. He tried to address some stuff in D.C. It's ugly. It's ugly. And Trump gave as good as he got. All that being said, there were some things that were good. So how do you take that? We've been talking today. If you've ever seen the movie Moneyball, what was it about? It was about basically analytics. And how do you take analytics and use it for your best interest? You take a look around and you bring some smart people on. And that's what the Oakland A's did back in the day. They they had analytics. They said, look, we can't replace some of these people. We don't have the money that the other guys do. So why don't we figure out how we manufacture what they do, just do it in a cost-effective way? And I think Glenn Youngkin has taken some of the best of what Trump has. He has not disavowed him. But he's kept him at arm's length and not really made him a central focus, no matter how hard McAuliffe tries. And McAuliffe is out there doing what he he feels desperate. He does. He absolutely feels desperate when you listen to him. And what's it about? It's about race. It's about pronouns. It's about all of these things when the average person's worried about putting bread on the table, not worried about she, him, her. We have an amazing history, but we also have some dark and abhorrent chapters. We must teach them all. We can't know where we're going unless we know where we have come from. Yeah, that's great. Except for at this moment in time, kids want to be back in school. We don't need more divisiveness inside of school because kids are a year plus behind. Read the room. Blue states, when it came to schools, wanted to shut everything down and continue to do things where you sit there and you scratch your head. Red states, a little bit more open. Well, yeah, but that's because they've got teachers who are all dead. Settle down again with your insanities. So who do you appeal to? Suburban mom and dad, who you know are going to come out and vote, who, who in large swaths dump Trump for Biden, that's that's who you're appealing to. You're appealing to parents saying, hey, look, you guys, you guys want to have control over your parent, your, your kids school, right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Our children, my child is 11. My other child's three. Stepkids are 11 and 13. They're growing up in the most diverse time in our history, the most inclusive time in our history, the most welcoming time in our history. That's pretty damn awesome. But when all you have to pitch is, we're going to do a critical race theory, we got to teach all the stuff that we did wrong, you go out there over and over and over again, and you make it all about the race, and you make it all about sex and gender and equality and all of these buzzwords, when the average person is worried about, hey, I want to put food on my table, make sure my kids have school, and that they're going to be going. These are the things that I want to do. These are the things I need to do. This is what I'm looking for in a governor. And I think Youngkin has done that to a certain extent. He shouldn't be in this race. This thing should have been a walkover. You find out in races who are the most important people, and right now that's independence. How do I court them, and what is it that I'm looking for? Because at the end of the day, this very few people stay away if they're going to vote from voting for the party that they already vote for. Very few people. The independents are the most important, and they're the exhausted majority, like you and I, who are sick and tired of voting against somebody rather than for somebody. So you go out there and you say, what is it that's important to them? What's important to them? Youngkin is, you know, we were just talking to producer Phil. He's running ads that are, you know, are about Virginia and the issues that people are having there where McAuliffe is running ads against, hey, he's just like Trump, or it's not, now it's how bad is this guy, not how good am I. 
find the area in which you can expand that tent, and that's independence, what makes them tick? They're worried about the economy, they're worried about inflation, and they're worried about their kids' school, most importantly, kids being in school. 323-538-2423, at Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. Tweet at us, text the program. I found this fascinating. So I don't know if you guys heard anything, but of course, you know, uh, the world, hunger, poverty, et cetera, et cetera. This is uh, former South Carolina governor, uh, the U.N. World Food Program executive director, David Beasley, who is going out to the billionaires and hitting them up for some cash. U.S. billionaires alone have gotten over a trillion dollars richer during the pandemic. You're asking those billionaires who are going to space, the likes Elon Musk and Jeff Bezos, to help. Are they helping? The governments are tapped out. And this is when the billionaires need to step up now on a one-time basis, $6 billion, to help 42 million people that are literally going to die if we don't reach them. 42 million people. 42 million people. Well, let's first and foremost talk about extreme poverty. So extreme poverty has absolutely shrunk from where we were in the 80s and 90s uh, to where we are today. That's pretty damn good. And it's shrunk in a large, large way. Still issues out there. Let's not pretend that they're not. But the reality is, is poverty is really full. In fact... Poverty has declined to 8.6%. And this is extreme poverty. So this guy is like, hey, let's hit everybody up for a, you know, let's let's hit all these billionaires up. So you got the former South Carolina governor, who's now the UN World Food Program Executive Director, David Beasley, talking about, hey, I need six billion bucks. I'm not asking them to do this every day, every week, every year. We have a one-time crisis, a perfect storm of conflict, climate change, and COVID. I've got... 43 nations with 42 million people in IPC level four, knocking on famine's door. Just help me with them one time. That's a $6 billion price tag. Jeff Bezos' net worth increase just last year during COVID was $64 billion. I'm just asking for 10% of your net worth increase. Just last week, Elon Musk had a $6 billion net worth increase one day. One day. Yeah. Yeah. One day. $6 billion. Six billion. Yeah, he did. Again, none of that's realized, and it's just there on paper, and so none of it's real. But, yeah, that's pretty damn huge. So this guy's out there, man. We need this cash. We need it. Give me some cash, guys. There's a bunch of them, but just 400, the top 400 billionaires in the United States. The net worth increase was $1.8 trillion in the past year. All I'm asking for is 0.36% of your net worth increase. I, I'm, I'm for people making money, but God knows I'm also for you helping people who are in great need right now. The world's in trouble, and every four seconds someone's dying out there from hunger-related causes. What if it was your family starving to death? Wake up, smell the coffee, and help. Yeah, so there he is, and I love what Elon Musk did. <laughs> so they, he's, he goes like, I, uh, you know, he's calling them out. It's only 2% of his wealth, and all of this kind of stuff, you know, because that's what you go and do. You know, let's let's attack them, attack them, attack them. I love this. Elon Musk tweeted out, uh, if WFP can describe on this Twitter thread exactly how $6 billion will solve hunger, I will sell Tesla stock right now and do it. And somebody said, well, it's not solve world hunger, but it will prevent global instability, mass migration, and $42 million. It's not what he said. It's show me how it works. Show me how it works. And a lot of it, that's what it is. Show me how it works. That's kind of funny, right? Like, wouldn't that be great if we could do that with government? Hey, we need to raise taxes on this. Okay, why? How are you going to spend the money? How how is six billion going to to to, to stave off forty two million people that are in crisis? And and is it strictly 
the 42 million people that are in crisis because of hunger, or is there a war-torn battle going on of which the U.N. really doesn't get involved other than right, right around their little blue helmets and do absolutely nothing while people get slaughtered? Is, is that what you're going to do? Is that how you're going to solve it? Because what I know is if you hand them $6 billion, what do you bet? I don't know. Most of it disappears, and they're still coming back and asking you for money. It's always been my frustration with government. That's why when I look at the way the U.N. and everybody runs at climate change, I do it with a skeptical eye. Because I feel like you're asking us all for a lot of money to make sacrifices. And at the end of the day, you're not going to actually solve anything. But it's going to sound like you did a lot. Yeah. We'll see if they follow through on this. My bet is no. My bet is no. He could probably go fix a lot of hunger on his own. He's just going to need a bunch of military people and ex-military people to uh, to protect him. Because as we all know, and as we saw with our good friends who, as we come up to our favorite time of the year, the holiday Christmas time, and our favorite song, it's Christmas time. <laughs> and there's no need to be afraid. A little Band-Aid. And that song's about famine, that we know what happened with a lot of that money that never quite made it to where it was supposed to, and a lot of that food was stolen and sold for weapons. So, mm, fair question. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. Tweet at us, text the program. My pillow has a boo It's buy one, get one free. So you buy one, you get one. That's it. And it's with the Giza Dream Sheets. Long staple cotton grown in one small particular area is what they use it, and it's grown right there in the middle of the Mediterranean between the sea, the Nile River, Sahara Desert. It's grown right there. Pops up, and it is breathable. It is comfortable. You will never sleep on anything comfort-wise when it comes to sheets close to this. You will love these. 60-day money-back guarantee, one-year limited warranty, all assortments of colors and sizes to fit your bed from king all the way down Absolutely incredible. Right now, you buy a set, you get a set for free. Great Christmas gifts. And can I just say, no issues when it comes to the supply chain. Go to MyPillow.com, use the promo code Benson to save big. MyPillow.com, promo code Benson. Deep discounts across all of the MyPillow products, from the slippers to the Giza Dream Sheets with the buy one, get one free, to the MyPillow itself and everything in between. MyPillow.com, promo code Benson. MyPillow.com, promo code Benson. Chad Benson Show. Check out our Chad Benson Show Facebook page where you can hang out or hang your grievances out to dry. This is Chad Benson. Had a crappy, crappy weekend. It was six and eight in the football world over the weekend. Last night, the Chiefs won barely, by the way. Can I just say, I don't know what's wrong with Patrick Mahomes. Have they figured him out? Is there, he got it. He's got happy feet. There's no doubt about that. You could tell, and it all started with the Super Bowl last year. That you'd see the frustration. Something happened. They get, you know, and and we all know that your quarterback's great until they get hit. But for whatever reason, last year it started there, and this year teams to have seem to have it figured out. And last night it was a Giants team that's not very good. That's not very good. He leads the league in interceptions. They did squeak by, uh, but. At the end of the day, not a great look for me. Uh, 78 still and 44. So we'll see what it looks like this week. So, hey, I'm still up big time. So you guys need to appreciate that. Please do. Christmas is here. Can I ask you a question as Christmas arrives? If you're saying, Chad, what could you get me entertainment-wise that would be amazing for Christmas? I don't know if this will be at the top of my list. And quite frankly, I don't know if we need this. The New York Times and Hulu are turning a critical eye to the controversial 2004 Super Bowl halftime show with Malfunction, the dressing down of Janet Jackson. The documentary dropping November 19th will take a look at the so-called wardrobe malfunction, during which Justin Timberlake briefly exposed Jackson's breast on live TV. It all but derailed her career while his continued unaffected. The Times teamed with Hulu earlier this year for the Emmy-nominated doc Framing Britney Spears. Wait, 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 wait. Wait, 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 wait. 
So, because we saw her nipple, apparently, in a quarter of a millisecond, <laughs> like, what? that we turned and said, never again shall he she have a hit. Never again will she be anything. Never again. But the guy who did that to her will become a megastar. Is that what you're telling me? Because I feel like you're telling me that. Let me tell you how this, I've not seen it. I don't know what it's going to look like, but this is the way I think it's going to go. She's a victim. And it's because she's black. And that's, and he is the perpetrator and he's evil and it's white privilege and all of the things that he did to her. None of those things should happen. I think it was a stupid, the fact that we made such a big deal out of it that people talked about, people ask me, Chad, what would you tell you? know, What did you tell your child? Cause he was, I was like, it's a boob. Get over it. It's a boob. That's it. There you go. It's a circle of life. Get over it. My goodness me. Just what, Santa Claus wanted. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. Tweet at us. Text the program. Love hearing from all of you. Chad Benson Show. This is the Chad Benson Show. Independent thoughts, independent life. This is Chad Benson. It is the first battle of the post-Trump, but really not because he's still here, era. And that's where we are. Glenn Youngkin, the upstart Republican, only worth a quarter of a billion dollars against Terry McAuliffe, former governor, name recognition, Democrat muckety-muck. To be governor of Virginia, why it matters nationally is everybody's looking at this and saying, here is the first opportunity for the Republicans to take a step in in a direction that will see them really boat race, potentially, the Democrats in 2022 in the midterms. Take back the House, take back the Senate. But you have to do it in such a way where, you know, all of these guys and gals that are running on the on the Republican Party, they're doing it in, in a way where it's like, OK, I, I, I want to bring the people that are, you know, Trump's supporters because I, I need their votes, but at the same time, I don't want the rhetoric, craziness, and chaos that goes with it. I think he's done a pretty good job, Yunkin, in balancing that. And that is a tough thing to do. Because when Trump wants to get involved, he's a bull in a China store. And he will get involved. And to his part... He has gotten involved kind of ish. And if Yunkin wins tonight, trust me, Trump's going to come out and say, he's my guy. I knew it. I was pulling for him. I was a big part of that. If he loses, you know, you never know what Trump may say. But the reality is the fact that he's in this race is, for a lot of people, amazing, considering almost 11 points Biden won Virginia by. Virginia has been solidly blue with President Biden winning by 10 points a year ago. McAuliffe has worked to tie Youngkin to former President Trump, but Youngkin's campaign believes enthusiasm is on his side over issues of education and the economy, making this a tight race. More than half of likely voters expected to cast their ballots today here in the Commonwealth. A record-breaking 1.1 million people have already voted early. That's huge. And of course, we're going to hear the same thing. Both sides are already gearing up for challenges. Both sides are already gearing up for, for you know, the potential of you know a, a recount and who knows what will come from there. 
And there's been the dirty tricks later last week. You know, if you guys saw the 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 four or five guys that were supposedly the white supremacists, Charlottesville, you know, standing in front of Glenn Youngkin's uh, little tour bus there. And uh, and I was just telling the guys, I, I'll be honest with you, either the guy's wearing blackface or that's a black guy who usually doesn't make a good white supremacist. And all of them seem to be Democratic operatives. And it was the Lincoln Project, who was supposedly a conservative project that couldn't stand Trump, that was behind the whole thing. It's dirty tricks indeed. Let me ask you a question. While you're out there, if you're either one of these guys, what do we want politicians to to do? Just be honest with us as much as you can, because you're inherently going to tell us BS. Uh, But... Talk to me about the issues. Talk to me about the issues. That's all I care about. I want to know about the issues. Whether it's statewide, citywide, or whether it's a national race. I want to know about the issues. What are you going to do to give us opportunities to better ourselves? Not fix everything, because you can't do that. But to give us the opportunities to put in place us to take the opportunities that are in front of us that's what people want to know terry mcculliffe pitching people yesterday (sighs) and i promise you we've got to diversify our teacher base here in virginia 50 50 percent of the students in virginia schools k-12 50 percent are students of color and yet 80 percent of the teachers are white we all know what we have to do in a school to make everybody feel comfortable in school. So let's diversify. So here's what I'm going to do. We'll be the first state in America. If you'll teach for five years here in Virginia in a high-demand area, I've got to be. we will pay room, board, and tuition at any college, any university, any HBCU here in the Commonwealth of Virginia. Okay, so you're, you're, you're pitching something that you're out there and and you're sitting there going okay that's so that's how does this affect me at this moment in time first of all let's get the kids back in the classroom let's stop fighting about some of this stuff and allow kids to live their lives and get their asses back in the classroom i think that's the 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 blue half if you will of the states have not done great when it comes to parents and teachers and unions in particular over the last year plus in the way that they saw a lot of this go and for the average parent that's not going to the school boards and screaming and yelling. They're not happy about a lot of this. They're not happy about some of the insanity that that went on there. And then, of course, parents had to write to veto bills, veto books, Glenn, not to be knowledge about it. Also take them off the shelves. And I'm not going to let parents come into schools bill. and actually you take books out and make their own decision. You vetoed it. So. Yeah, I stop the bill that I don't think parents should be telling schools what they should teach. No, no, you know, but but you want to tell parents in many ways how to parent. And by the way, I don't think parents, I think parents need to be involved. But you're also out there pushing things like race theory, critical race, whatever you want to call it. Parents have a right to be frustrated with that. Absolutely. Not because I don't think we should teach certain things. I think we should absolutely do it. But it's what we're teaching and how we're teaching it that are very fair questions to ask. But that's where, if you're Yunkin, you talk about what? Parents, I hear you. You're frustrated. You're angry. They're making this all about race, as they tend to do. I want to make this about you. I want to give you the choices in certain things. I don't think we should get rid of books, period, case closed, end of story. People just want transparency and a little bit of honesty. We're not asking you to tell every secret that's out there, but how about being open? Tonight, this will go a long way, I think, into even if Youngkin doesn't win, which is a possibility. If it is a nail-biter, the way that a lot of people think it's going to be, Considering less than a year ago, you won by 10.6% or whatever it was. You do realize that's kind of the way a lot of people are feeling in America. And if this continues to go in that direction, that is not a good look. And the president is overseas pitching the dream about climate change and, and all of that stuff. And people want to know, what are you doing back here at home? You still have not addressed 
the country when it comes to what's happening here with inflation, what's happening here with the economic side of things. That's what people are looking for you to do. That's it. That's it. You can't even get a bill passed on, on you know, by your own set of senators and Congress people through because some of it is so ridiculous that, yeah, you guys are going to blame Manchin. Simply put, I will not support a bill that is this consequential without thoroughly understanding the impact that it'll have on our national debt, our economy, and most importantly, all of our American people. Every elected representative needs to know what they are voting for and the impact it has, not only on their constituents, but the entire country. He's at risk hurting American families suffering from historic inflation. Yeah. Oh, that's what people want to hear. More people are paying attention to mansion and cinema, even though both of them are doing stuff a little bit different and they have their own reasons. But Manchin's talking about we're not going to build an entitlement. We're not going to be in a situation where we continue to spend money, which we're printing. And by the way, we still haven't spent all the money we printed before, if you will. I think it's good. But where are you? He's across the world. And yes, climate change and talking about that, I am not downplaying that at all. But back home right now, the average person, whether you're in Queens, whether you're in Cedar Rapids, whether you're in Orlando, Florida, or Bend, Oregon, or, you know, you know, Postman, Montana, or in Phoenix, Arizona, you're worried more about not the climate at this moment in time. You're worried about food on the table. You're worried about supply chains. You're worried about going from point A to point B where you don't have to take out a second mortgage to put gas at point A so you can put more gas at point B to get back to point A. That's what people are paying attention to. Read the room. And it's not just Biden. The Democrats as a whole are more interested in fighting over things like pronouns and 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 all of this other stuff than dealing with the issues at hand. And there's not a ton they can do. I'm not saying they got to fix everything because let's be real, you can't. But you can at least act and acknowledge like you care. And on top of that, do the things you can and start to lay out a vision of how you're going to get through this. That's what leaders do. 323-538-2423 at Chad Benson Show. Twitter, tweet, text. Rough Greens makes any pet food better. I give it to my dogs every single day. A little bit in the morning, a little bit in the evening. Right, just like you, you know, a lot of you out there, you take supplements, right? Maybe a vitamin here. For me, I like have these chewies. They're really nice, actually. And sprinkle on top of my dog's food, and away it goes. It helps with their energy. It helps with their fur. It helps with their skin, and it really helps my older dog with his joint pain. He doesn't have joint pain anymore like he used to. It used to be a point where if you touched him on his hips, he would turn around and snarl at you. We thought we were going to have to get rid of him. We couldn't even pick him up to put him in his little bed. Now, He's bouncy, he's happy, and it's all because of this amazing supplement called Canine Vitasmart from Rough Greens. Try it before you buy it. It is a simple thing to do. R-U-F-F-Greens.com slash Chad. Roughgreens.com slash Chad. You go there, and this is what happens. They're going to send you a bag for free. You cover the cost of shipping. That's simple. You can call them as well. 833-MY-DOG-77. 833-MY-DOG-77. You cover the cost of shipping, a bag of Rough Greens for free. Rough Greens makes any pet food better. Chad Benson Show. Being antisocial sucks. Hang with Chad's friends on Facebook, The Chad Benson Show. And if you just need some alone time, head on over to Twitter at Chad Benson Show. Either way, we can't wait to meet the real you. Five, four, three, two, one, zero. Ignition. Lift off. Now it's time to find out what's trending. What's trending? Yeah, what does that mean? I mean something, right? Like it's trending on the old internet. What's trending? Let us take a peek and find out what's trending. Where should we start today? Let's start at Google. Champions League. Trending. God, it's just great to see that. I love that. Love that. That's today. NFL power rankings. Cowboys. 
soaring to the top along with the Packers. Where do I vote? Trending. Why? Because today, around the country, several places voting. Uh, overnight, Chiefs trending. Two million searches. What's wrong with Patrick Mahomes? The question. Election Day in Virginia, trending big time. And it's time, kids, they're saying, on the Google and everywhere else. For Christmas, Ryan Carey smashes the pumpkin to kick off the Christmas festivities. Because as we all know, she don't want a lot for Christmas. I don't know if that's true. I think so. Critical race theory is trending. It is. It is. It is. It's always trending. Always trending. Critical race theory is always trending. Squid Game Crypto crashes and all the investors lose their money. No. Yeah. Yeah. It was on a roller coaster ride in a 10 minute span. The token's value grew from $628. To $2,856. Then, five minutes later, it traded at (laughs) 0.0007. Now is when you buy. Now, those wild swings, I'll tell you this in the world of investing, uh, there's not a lot of people in there. And when there's not a lot of people in there, you will find swings like that because a little bit of of a pump and dump will make a move. Head on over to Google where everybody's fighting about everything. Kathy Griffin is trending right now because, well, uh, that's kind of what happens when the Let's Go Brandon thing's trending. So everybody's trying to make the argument that that's horrible and evil. And then people will go, well, look what she did. How do you justify this? And then that's a bad thing. And it's just, oh, my goodness me. Really? Really? That's where we are? (sighs) Yes, that's where we are. Harry Styles dons a Dorothy costume. And he sings Britney Spears' Toxic Cover. Oh, my Lord. How could he? Great White Sharks are trending. We'll talk about that because, as we all know, nature will mess you up. And then people said a statement from Donald Trump on Alec Baldwin is fabricated. And that's what fact checkers are also saying, which, of course, is bad. Because we want it to be true. We want Trump to say horrible things about people and say, yes, well, he would have said it, given the opportunity. So that, that's where we are in our arguments now. Well, it w- we w- he would have said it, but he just didn't think of it. <laughs> she would have totally done that, but, you know, whatever. 323-538-2423, at Chad Benson Show. Is your Twitter. Producer Phil, remind everybody about nature, if you could, really quick. Nature will mess you up. Mess you up. So scientists have come up with something. And I I want you guys to understand this. The taste test isn't the same. Okay? So the taste test isn't the same. But all that being said... We do look like seals, apparently, to great white sharks. (laughs) So, yeah. Researchers from uh, McCurry University in Sydney found that swimming or paddleboarding, if you're a human, bears a strong likeness to seals and sea lions in the eyes of juvenile white sharks in particular. Great white sharks, along with bull sharks and tiger sharks, account for most bites in humans, and they are the largest predatory fish in the world. So... They did 20 years of study and found that, yes, younger, in particular, great white sharks. And remember, you see a female that's massive. She might be 40 or 50 years old. It takes a long time for them to get to sexual maturity. So a 13-footer may still be a young pup, if you will. And a taste test may go, but we do look like them. But it's the tasting that's the problem. Chad Benson Show. Chad Benson Show.
independent thoughts, independent life. This is Chad Benson. Voting day around the country in particular. The big thing going on in Virginia. Who will win? I don't know. They're going to fight it over, I'm sure, in court. I have a feeling court will be involved. I'm going to go out there and just say, I sense court lawsuits, accusations will be involved in the governor's race. Our president is across the pond with 85 cars and the other 400 airplanes there who are talking about climate change, talking about the things that that we need to do to 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 fix climate change and how we can stop uh, you know, this from continuing to get worse. I guess I shouldn't apologize, but I do apologize for the fact the United States, uh, in the last administration, pulled out of the Paris Accords and put us sort of behind the table. It really didn't, by the way. I mean, yeah, it did, Chad. It totally put us behind. No, it didn't. It didn't. We're that serious about it, right? Like, if if climate change was a meteor, <laughs> Right? They would be like, let's raise a bunch of money. Let's talk about how we could shoot the meteor. Let's talk about who gets to be involved. We'll all sign paperwork. We all get to stand for pictures. We could talk about how some people are going to escape the meteor and they'll have meteor escape privilege and others will not. They'll turn it into a political thing and say, this over here is because of meteor deniers and these people over here are over meteor people media monitors if you will <laughs> oh my god yeah and then then the next person will say you're only vote for this person because of the way that he or she is going to handle the media all the while the meteor's coming but then you find out as it goes to the atmosphere, it it shrinks and shrinks and shrinks. And are you saying that's going to happen with climate change? I'm saying 100 years, we're still going to be here. Unless, of course, a real asteroid smashes into us, then we're screwed. We can get everything back to perfect that the way that they think it should be. And then all of a sudden, a giant asteroid smashes into us. Oh, man. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. Tweet at us. All the while that's going on, we still have issues like, I don't know. Mm. Oh, yeah, that whole thing with the supply chain. Well, we definitely recognize that we need to restore economic prosperity. And that starts by getting people back in the workforce and stopping the supply chain issue that is rising prices that is causing businesses to close. I mean, there's so many things that have come from the policies of Joe Biden that have hurt our entire economy, starting with our Thanksgiving, where we're going to be paying more for gas, for turkey, for everything. That's uh, Ron McDaniel right there. And this is where a good journalist would say, well, what has he done specifically that has seen prices rise based on his policies? The policies energy-wise that he's doing now will be felt in the next several years. But not today. He didn't cause the issues with, the you know, with like turkeys, right? Like he didn't go out and say, let's have a bunch of cold blow through certain areas. Let's get some people who, you know, get COVID and, and then we'll have less people working here, which means we can't have, we have enough turkeys. We just don't have enough people to process them. Let's make sure. We, what, what are those things out there? Now the supply chain issues, I'll be honest with you. There are some things I think he can do. I don't think he caused a lot of these, but it's not about what's good. It's like being a relief pitcher, right? Every president, outside of George Washington, is a relief pitcher in baseball. Right, Got the World Series game five tonight, or game six, back in Houston. Braves have a chance to close it out. So as a relief pitcher, you got to do what? You don't, you'd like to hope that, okay, I'm starting the inning. Got no runners on. I'm facing, you know, the back half of their, their lineup. They're not very good. I'm a lefty. They're all lefties. They don't hit lefty pitching well. That's what you're hoping for. 
But sometimes you're coming in in the heart of the lineup and the bases are loaded. And this is where you look at your relief pitcher and you look at your manager, should be the president of the United States of America, and you start figuring out what can you do to give your team the best chance of winning, putting the arms in the right place to try to get the people out that they need to get out so you can get out of this unscathed and you'll have a chance then to hit. That's what you're looking for. And right now, bases are loaded. And it feels like it's, uh, you know, 1-0, 2-0, maybe heading up to a, to, a, to a hitter count. you got to figure that out. You didn't load them up, but you got to figure out a way to get out of it. Anytime that supply chain is disrupted, that costs money, that eventually costs jobs, and that costs economic output. And those things affect the quality of life of our region. The people need to travel to go somewhere. I mean, they're on back order or you can't get them. I'm a little nervous if I buy something, it's going to take two months and then I won't be ready for the holidays. We're not going to be able to control our own destiny on every single item. And, uh, and so, therefore, uh, we should have as many options as possible for our customers to make sure they have a great experience. Yeah, I might just give them gift cards, which, you know, it's not as exciting. No, but that's what people are feeling because today and yesterday, I mean, we, we've kicked off the holiday season. I'm looking at Christmas commercials. Halloween's gone. That was last week. This is the Thanksgiving Christmas rush. People are looking around. They're frustrated across the board. They want to see what are you going to do? Where's the empathy? Where is he getting in front of this, talking to the American people? Man, how nobody's advised him to have a sit-down, fireside chat, if you will, inside of the Oval Office, talk about, look, these things are frustrating, but we're blessed. But it isn't going to be easy this holiday season to find everything you need, but we're going to do everything we can to make sure that we make it as smooth as possible, and it will not be a perfect solution, but it'll be better than what's going on now, and we're going to take the politics out of it and get this done. Feel like you are with them. That's what people are looking for. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. Tweet at us. You know, with all the talk of the Virginia race and and all this chaos and craziness of, you know, you go and you look and it's 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 critical race theory. It's masking the children. It's making sure they get shot. It's all of this stuff, right? This has become a hot spot of parents and teachers and school boards. But then there's Florida. (laughs) That should be how it starts. But then there's Florida. Florida, too, has their issues when it comes to teacher-parent relation. This one, a little different. Victoria Treese has two children at Sand Lake Elementary in Orange County. She's been volunteering for five years, but was told two weeks ago she could no longer donate her time and spend more time on campus with her kids. This is why her occupation, working in the adult entertainment industry. We're showing you images found on her public social media sites, not unlike what you might see at the beach. But she does have a private subscription site where she earns a living called OnlyFans. I would say that it's nobody's position to judge what anybody does in their private life. Well, I agree with you 110% Victoria. So she likes to volunteer and she participate in her kid's life. And she does it because she can, cans. And she goes out and she does these things because she wants to. She is taking an active role in her children's education. Another parent sent images from that site to school administrators. Now, I'm going to say this. This may come across as harsh. What do you bet it was a mom, 250, maybe three bills, cankles, right? Wearing her hush puppies. And the reason they're hush is because they can't bark. <laughs> You're being a jerk, Chad. It's never the other hot mom. Because she's like, how much are you making? No, no, no. It's because somebody's husband or somebody brought it to set attention. And then she took it to the people. Look at this. And then, of course, the school boards. Yeah, look at those. Those are horrible. Those are just I can't, I can't even, those are, wow.
Can't have that. We're almost respected. We're in Florida. We're almost respected part of the country. I continue. Leading to Teresa's dismissal. It's humiliating to have people judge you for something that when you feel like what you're doing isn't wrong. I don't think that my job and what I do privately that has no regards to anybody else in any in anybody else's world besides my own. Yeah. Look, it's she's 18. It's for people 18 or 21 plus. It's it is over behind a paywall, over an age bracket. So, well, but kids will figure out a way. Probably, probably they will. But she's suing because again, it's it's Florida. We're not talking about critical race theory here. We're not. We're talking about milfs and whether or not they should be allowed to. Anyone? Anyone? Volunteer. Trees passed a background check required under the district's additions volunteer registration site. Nowhere on the form we reviewed does it ask for a person's occupation. Her attorneys notified the district they intend to sue for at least one million dollars. What authoritarian mentality allows somebody to point a discriminating finger at somebody and say, we don't approve of you and you can't be around children. That becomes frightening. Well, unless, of course, you're a child molester and a pedophile, then you have every right to say no. And the courts will say that this lady's not done none of those things. Let her be. Let her be. And if you feel uncomfortable that she's there because your husband may find her attractive and you were alerted to it and you're more a jealous housefrau, then well, would you let your child be around? Is she a nice lady? Is she going to do anything horrible to my kid? No. Then why, why wouldn't I? She's not an adult film star, is she? <laughs> I don't know. I'm not buying the paywall. Still, again, while everyone else is fighting about stuff, we can always be reminded, Florida, 323-538-2423, at Chad Benson, show your Twitter, tweet at us, text the program. Love hearing from every single one of you. I do. Oprah's got a list out. Of stuff, her favorite things. We shall discuss and find out if the Chad Benson Show podcast is on that list. Chad Benson Show. Deep states? Uh, no. Deep doo doo? Yeah. The Chad Benson Show. Holidays right around the corner. I think we already know that. Very excited about that. Too far away from the uh, thanks of giving, which is phenomenal. 25th, we're at the second. We got 23 days. We'll get right there. And then it's one month from that day to Christmas. Now, Christmas time being here, you got to figure out what's your favorite things out there. What can you get? Well, Oprah's always had her favorite gift list. 25 years since Oprah's favorite things began. Can y'all believe that? It all started as a way for me to share joy and gratitude to the people who matter most, including yourself. I'm going to keep these myself. I love these. We have gifts for everybody. Open your boxes. One, two, three. You get a call. You get a call. You get a call. Everybody gets a call. I love that. Everybody gets a car. Not here. Some of the neat stuff that Oprah's got. Uh, on the gift list this year, which will all be sold out in an hour because it's still Oprah. Imagine having that power. Like, uh, you know, like you go and you look at, say what you want about, you know, the likes of, uh, and I'm going to tell you, I, I go and look at somebody like Kanye West. Having that power to release a hoodie and then know it's going to be sold out in the space of 10 minutes is insane. The Chai Box gift set. or the Yeah. So, uh, consists of three Chai Blends and Inspired by different regions in India, all with their own unique flavor. She loves that. Cozy Earth Plush Socks, 24 bucks plus free shipping, 50% savings right now. The Foot Nanny Foot Creams are a big deal right there. Uh, the Truff Hot Sauce, and it's a bestseller pack. And this looks, it's, it's black truffle hot sauce and just about everything they said. She's made it a staple. She goes, whenever I have guests, this is what they ask for. Rebel Girls Books, Peeper's Blue Light Readers, 
The Flamingo Estate Three Sisters Candles are big. The Uma Pure Calm. Fellas, you better be writing this down. Super small jewelry and nail kits for tiny people. <laughs> oh, that's just for kids. My bad. You'll just have to purchase somebody small. The K. Carol accessory, Kelsey Crossbody, which is some sort of bag, and it's vegan leather crossbody. What is vegan leather? <laughs> is, that, is that a thing? The Maya J. Jewelry Harmony Trio bracelets. The Melt Fit Solid Leggings. She goes, I'm typically not a colored leggings type of gal. I know I should bring race into this. But they come in subdued dark and are made to enhance curves with medium compression, ample stretch and high waistline, and side pockets. Hold your cell phone or keys. The True Medic Neck and Back Massager. Great for him and her. This one looks good. The Brooke and Company Travel Bag and Tool Kits. That looks kind of neat. Big time. And her number one thing is the Malibu Sky Vegan Leather Crossbody Handbags. So those are some of the things. Guys, write that down. I'm trying to help you. I want you to get ahead of the game. If Oprah says it, she's pretty much on it. People will be having it. You don't want your wife to be left out in the cold. I'm just saying, I care about you. That's what I'm trying to tell you. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson Show is your Twitter Tweet at us, text the program. He's across the pond. He's doing what he's doing. It's about, you know, methane and, and, and let's fight climate change. We're proposing two new rules. Two. One through our Environmental Protection Agency that's going to reduce methane losses from new and existing oil and gas pipelines. And one through the Department of Transportation to reduce wasteful and potential dangerous leaks from natural gas pipelines. They have authority over that area. Don't you wish they would fight wasteful spending? Like, I've, I've got two new organizations that we've set up here. The accountability of wasteful spending. And the accountability of spending surplus. Ass. <laughs> Aww. That'd be awesome. We are going to fight wasteful spending every single day. We're going to do it every day in every way we possibly can. We feel that we spend way too much money. And rather than raise taxes, we've decided to do something else. We've decided to go, hey, we've got eight bucks in our account. We can afford a $5 meal, not a $12 meal. That's what I'm thinking. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson shows your Twitter. Tweet at us. Text the program. Do love hearing from every single one of you. Check out the Getter as well. Getter! This is the Chad Benson Show. This is the Chad Benson Show. Independent thoughts, independent life. This is Chad Benson. That is Election Day in Virginia. What will happen? What won't happen? Hmm, That is a very, very interesting question. And we're going to find out. I I don't think anybody really knows what's going to happen tonight. I think we're already figuring there is going to be a close race that is going to be battled in court potentially because that's how things get done now. Things get done in ways like, hey, let's fight over this in court. That's kind of what happens. What are the big issues for the average person? If you're, a, and by average person, again, nobody's average. We're just talking about you aren't Elon Musk. I think we could all agree. You know, he's, he's three times. On paper, he's three times wealthier 
than Warren Buffett. Soak that in for a second. He's three times wealthier than Warren Buffett. That's it's a lot of cash. So I'm just talking about the average person, right? You know, family makes anywhere between, you know, 70 and $120,000 a year, depending on where you are in the country. You're trying to get by. Christmas is here. What are the things that are concerning you this fourth quarter of the year? Maybe you don't celebrate Christmas, but you know what I mean. Like, it's the holiday season. It's the holiday season. whoop de doo What's worrying you? What's on your mind? What's the number one thing that you're worried about? Is it coronavirus? Probably not now. I mean, I think we're at the point where, like, you know, we're kind of over this. We're just living our lives. We hope there's not another flare, but, uh, you know, at this point in time, I mean, what else are we going to do? I mean, uh, you know, you, how how much more can you shut down and expect to have a nation uh, and, and not have these troubles over and over again? At some point, you're going to have to fight through it. So probably not. Is it schools and kids? That may be up there on your list. Absolutely. I, th- I think that's that's somewhere in there in your top five. And coronavirus may be number five for some people. Maybe you got comorbidities. It's number one. But I think the just, you know, I'm just going on family of four kind of, you know, across the nation, painting a swath. You can make them whatever color you want, whatever, you know, two husbands, two wives, whatever it is. But I'm just saying I'm putting it out there like that. Maybe... It's what they're teaching in school. It's a possibility. Absolutely. That, that, that could be a possibility. I mean, there is that that's going on in the battle that's happening there. Maybe you're worried about inflation. The rising cost of stuff. Putting food on your table that you've been able to do and But now, instead of getting a little bit ahead, you're just kind of treading water. And now, in a situation where you thought, well, this Christmas will, you know, compared to last Christmas, will be better. And the opportunities will be here. And lo and behold, inflation's come in and took a big bite out of what you were hoping you were going to spend. And maybe what your work was going to be able to do because you got the supply chain issues. So maybe it's that. Or maybe it's the economy as a whole. Take away the inflation side of it. Just the economy as a whole. Is your job going to be there tomorrow? Are you going to be hybrid? Are you going to be brought back to the office? Those are things that the average person's thinking about. And when it comes to climate change, it's probably not in your, you know, the average person. If you're 22, right? So you're 20. Who who cares really about climate change? First of all, we should all care because it's an important thing. We should talk about it and figure out how we go about bridging the gap between fossil fuels and cleaner energy without penalizing people and blowing this thing up because it's just not going to happen. The fossil fuel companies have way too much money. And the green group, they don't have the power yet. They just don't. And we should be, be concerned about it. But not on a day-to-day. You know, you, it's hard. If I told you you got 30 years to live, you're not worrying about it today. You're like, oh, that's not bad. I have 30 years. Unless you're 30. Yeah, but, you know, if you're 50 or 60 and you're like, hey, you got another 30 years in the end, it's going to be pretty good. You're going to be like, hmm, you know, and even when you get to that age, there's things you could do to slow it down, to help it. You may be able to kick it out a few more years or whatever. It's the same thing with fossil. You know, it's the same thing with all that's going on with climate change. If I tell you, hey, all of this stuff could could potentially happen, not will happen, but could potentially happen. But we know you've got this amount of time. For sure. You're not thinking about that. What you are thinking about is Christmas, food, uh, Thanksgiving, travel, uh, you know, all, all of the things that's top of mind at this moment in time. It's not a selfish thing. Who thinks about climate change? It's, it's 22-year-olds, 21-year-olds. They don't have any responsibility. They don't have any skin in the game. They're not married with kids. They don't have kids at all. They don't own a house usually. They're they're you know they're 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 fresh out of school with you know and, and their liberal arts degrees and their minds are racing with all the things they're going to do and they got pronouns and that's the people that are truly worried about this and I, this is their great war. This is the battle. This is the evil beast. They're fighting the man across the board. 
But for everybody else, homeowners, taxpayers, business owners, you know, employees, mother, father, parent, grandparent, raising kids, all we're thinking about stuff like this. Not that that stuff's not important, and and it is. Again, I don't want to downplay like, oh, it's not. But I think in the overall scheme of things, if you're looking to grab votes and you're looking to get attention, you talk about what matters to people. When I've watched some of these debates for across the country, not just in Virginia, which is a big kind of bellwether thing I think a lot of people are looking at, could this be something that potentially could be the first actual movement in the, you know, Biden is failing scenario? And let's not forget, Biden is 10 months into this. All that being said, you wanted to be the man. You got to be the man. You are the man at this point in time, and you're not doing a lot of the things that you would hope to be doing. And you've got a lot of issues that are out there. And maybe, just maybe, you're going to have to pivot and figure out how you address these things. But when I've watched all of these things, what I've seen is insults, discussing things that, for all intents and purposes, really don't matter to the average person. McAuliffe has been... Very much the, you know, hitting all of, checking all the right boxes without checking the biggest box of all. How are you going to help people in Virginia with all that's going on right now? Not asking you to solve problems, but what can you do to alleviate some of these problems? And what can you do to get out of people's way so they can deal with some of these things without being a hurdle. Talking about race issues all day, it checks a box. But you know what? People who are black or people of color or what was it? BIPOC. You know, they, they're dealing with the economy as well. They're dealing with all of the same things that everybody else is. The pronoun debate, the fight over masking in school, all of these things... Yeah, they should be talked about, but when you're focused solely upon them, the average person's not paying attention. There's one thing about Trump I said. For all of the 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 insanity between him and Hillary that went on and the reality show TV crap, what did I say Trump kept doing? He would turn to the camera, and while they're all yelling at each other, saying, you said what, you act like a locker room guy, and you said they let me do this, and blue, 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 and then he would say, well, you know, look at you know, look at Bill and all the things that you did to all these women. And, and, and while she would go on and on about that stuff, he would turn and go, jobs. He would turn and go, economy. Matters. It matters. And right now, you look at the economy, not good. You look at the confidence that people have in the likes of the Biden administration at this moment in time, not good. And you can tie Trump all you want to Glenn Youngkin and Youngkin to Trump, even though he is kind of given a roadmap of how to keep Trump close enough but far enough away that, you know, the bad doesn't land on him with the chaos and you get branded a Nazi and at the same time, you're still getting some of that good that came with Trump with the jobs and things like that. It's it's a roadmap. And this is a guy who wasn't really supposed to be in it. He's not super dynamic. Quite frankly, I think most of these people, if you put them up against somebody who's really dynamic and good, they get blown off of the stage. But they're always playing, they're always punching at their same weight class. So if you're a politician and you want to expand that tent and you want to get bigger, Talk about the things that matter to people. Don't dismiss if somebody asks you a question certain things, but at the same time, talk and address the largest group that's going to help you get there. And the independents are thinking about putting food on the table, the economy, keeping kids in school rather than shutting down, the supply chain, whether or not they're going to have a job tomorrow, Inflation, and you watch what happens. 323-538-2423, at Chad Benson shows your Twitter. Tweet at us, text the program. Car Shield makes your life so much easier. I've got Car Shield. You should too. Car Shield's great. Family's got it. 
I recommend it to all my friends, and the reason is pretty simplistic. If something goes wrong with your car, it's nice to know that you got 24-7 roadside assistance coast to coast. You got, you've got, like the best mechanic in your world because you get to choose the mechanic that you want to take your car to get that cover repair fixed and then you hand it over to car shield and you let them deal with all the stuff right because you don't need that headache and that's what car shield does for a million drivers have been helped by car shield their cars go farther because they're the best number one auto protection company in america and the beauty of car shield is not only get coast to coast road, roadside assistance, you get rental coverage, trip reimbursement, all at no extra charge. And when it comes to how expensive is it, well, I'll tell you how expensive it is. They got budgets, plans to fit everybody in the budget they have. What is it you're looking for? You're worried more about just one or two particular things in your car. You're worried about covering everything. They've got a plan that's right for you. Go to carshield.com slash Benson right now. You're going to save yourself 10%, but the good news is, hey, with CarShield protecting you, you don't have to worry about those expensive cover repairs. You're not going to be on the hook for thousands of dollars. CarShield.com slash Benson saves you 10%. A deductible may apply. Chad Benson Show. Warning, no snowflake zone. Uninformed opinions are in danger of melting. The Chad Benson Show. The fallout of the Netflix Dave Chappelle special continues. Two Netflix workers who led the protest against Dave Chappelle have filed labor charges for him being a big meanie. I don't know if you guys saw over the weekend, but he and uh, Rogan uh, performed in New Orleans. And, uh, man, the, the backlash against them was trem- like they could only get 17,000 people in the 17,000 people arena. That's pretty, it's pretty sad. They can only Tara Fields and B. Pagels Minor have filed charges with the National Labor Relations Board. Oh, they have relations after the company suspended Field and fired Page Minor. Oh, but what about Major? What about Page Major? So I think she was the one uh, who leaked the data and information, which you don't do. But but look, if Chappelle had never caused controversy and you leak information that is privy to your company to the public that you're not supposed to do, you're going to get fired. And because you're trans or LGBTQ, doesn't mean you're above reproach or the law or any of those things. You're not a special class of people that has diplomatic immunity. You're not. It doesn't work that way, kids. And then everybody was mad because over the weekend, (laughs) Chappelle and them went at when at, you know, just the whole thing. Like, he hits it face on. He doesn't care. And if you're, like, it's, I'm sure for a lot of these these people out there, and I'm not talking about trans people. I'm just thinking about the people who use the, the social justice aspect of things to attack and to try to get things taken off television. And, and it's so funny, like the whole McAuliffe versus Yunkin thing, it's like, oh, they want to get rid of this book and stuff. And yet you go and watch people on the left, mostly, who go and go after, you know, everybody. You want to silence everybody. You're just sitting there laughing. And you, <laughs> they, they hit it head on. And they must think their superpowers aren't working. My superpowers aren't working. I've normally, when I tweet and tell people they should fire these people or get rid of them or take their program off, it works. Why is it not working? I don't know. It's not. Maybe you guys can all get together and form a trans bot. (laughs) Is that funny? Am I going to get in trouble for that, Phil? (laughs) No, it was funny. Oh, that was kind of funny. Form of a trans bot. I identify as someone who's been hurt. You're being me, Chad. Probably. 
Are we getting canceled? I always tell everybody, look, if you're going to cancel me, do it on the weekend so I don't have to go to work Monday. <laughs> don't have me drive in. Somebody tried to cancel me over the weekend. He came after me. I'll tell that story. We kind of, I think you guys will find it funny because I wasn't quite sure what I said that was offensive. And I'm still trying to figure it out. But it had nothing to do with, like, identity. And nothing. To, it had to do about trucking. And I thought, this is the weirdest conversation I've had. Because normally when somebody comes after me, the right comes after me because I didn't worship at the altar of Trump or I said something nice about Biden or somebody on the left. And left comes after me because I don't really need a reason. But this had nothing to do with any of those things. It was so bizarre. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. Tweet at us. Text the program. I love hearing from all of you. That might be a great cartoon team. Trans bots. Fantastic. I can be whatever I want to be, whenever I want to be. Chad Benson Show. The Chad Benson Show. Independent thoughts, independent life. This is Chad Benson. You know, uh, this is a business where it's, you know, people are always looking to get you in trouble, always looking to cancel you, always looking, you know, to, to do something. And I, 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 don't, I, I don't know. I mean, I just sit there and laugh. I've never, ever wanted to fire somebody or get somebody fired or have them canceled. Some people feel that's the... They feel like they're in groups that are marginalized, and this is the opportunity to take power. And if they can get enough sympathy by a bunch of other people and they can build up a big enough mob, then they can get the torches, if you will, and and go Frankenstein and chase the monster away. And they'll prove, ha ha, ha ha, which I've always found to be, you know, bizarre. But everybody always feels like they're in a group. Right. So the other day I couldn't figure it out. So I'm sitting here going, this guy, he he he. He texts at me, and feel free to do that. This is my text line, so when you go and you you, you tweet at me, uh, it's at Chad Benson Show, but when you text at me, 323-538-2427, 323-538-2427, that's a text line, uh, then, you know, that comes directly to me, and I, and I try to answer everybody. This guy was mad at me, and I couldn't figure out. He said, Chad, you said truck drivers are guys who have failed at least at nine other things. Nobody sets out to be a truck driver as their first choice. Really, bro? And I'm like, I don't. Was it nine? Like, uh, he says, your quote. I thought I'd give you a comment before uh, your get your comment before it was trending. And I didn't say it was like the ninth. Maybe I said it was the sixth or something. I don't know. Like, I'm. it's humor. Get over it. Stop taking it yourself so seriously. And most people don't. And I go, well, can you tell me when it was? Just, you know, like everything. Because I'm like, okay, show me when it, what, what I said. Well, like, that hurt your feelings. And he goes on and he's like, yeah, well, I, you know, like they were going to, you know, I don't know what he was hoping to do or whatever. But you can intimate throughout this as he's like, oh, many of us truck drivers are upset about that. And I'm like, well, I got a lot of truck drivers listening to me. And they're probably, going, mm, mm, mm. you know, it's like not what I set out to do. But it's it's bigger than that because that's where we are now. It's like. Everybody feels they're aggrieved at something. Somebody did something to me and said something that I didn't like. And because of that, I I feel like I'm an aggrieved party. And I should be in a position to strike back. And I'm like, dude, I put my opinions out there. By the way, I'll ask a bunch of truck drivers, like, this is the number one thing. I'm sure there were some people out there who wanted, they wanted to do convoy. That's totally it. I have a friend who's a truck driver. I guarantee you, if I ask her today, hey, Verancia, this is like your number one thing you ever dreamed of? She'd look at me like, don't make me come over and slap you. <laughs> don't make me. Okay. But, again, it was like, I'm going to give you a chance before. Before what? 
before you're going to try to destroy me? And, and look, we ended up, you know, I, I chatted with him for a while, and, and I was like, you know, look, dude, I'm a talk show host who, you know, spews crap all day. Uh, you know, yes, I do a lot of stuff based in real actual facts, but a lot of it's humor, and we're having a good time, and, and, and we're trying to have fun with the news and the chaos, but... Uh, like everything else, you know, it's every you, you take all it, I say and anybody else says with a grain of salt. What well, we should totally no, you do it, but it just shows you that the, that's where we are. So even now, we were joking around about like you know the people that were fired from Netflix and one was suspended. One of them who was fired did something you shouldn't do, regardless of your color, who you love, who you worship. Uh, you know, if you're a cisgendered white male and you go and do that, you will be fired because you're not supposed to do what they did. But everybody feels they're aggrieved. And we were joking around. I was like, well, maybe they should do a show called Transbots. And I'm like, I'm sure someone's going to complain. Like, that's our pastime now. It's just complain, complain, complain. Get mad. Fire somebody. That's what I want. Never understanding the repercussions. Never getting nuances anything. Never. It's like going to a comedy show and then people are laughing and maybe you didn't find something funny and you understand why other people are laughing. So you want everybody fired because somebody laughed. And that's the weirdness of what we're at now. Right? Like that is the weirdness of where we are. Sad but true. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. Tweet at us, text the program. Seattle is the most anxious major metro city in the U.S. New data shows. They are nervous in Seattle like a long-tailed cat in a room full of jackhammers. See what I did there? I was going to say rocking chairs, but I went jackhammers. Uh, Seattle's number one. Number one. Houston, number two. You guys are going to get where I'm going with this. Number three, Baston. Baston. Number four, Philly. They're always anxious in Philly, right? Remember, they booed Santa Claus. Five, San Francisco. Six. So you go and you look in here. We've gone through that. We've got D.C. Oh, there you go. Seven, Chicago. Oh. That's crazy. Chicago? Stress? Really? Eight, where I live, Phoenix. Apparently, 46.3% of people are on edge. Ooh. Number nine, L.A. Number 10, Detroit. They're at 43.9%, or just maybe 43%. Oh, it's not very nice, Chad. Number 11, Riverside. Another Valley of the Dirt People. 12, Dallas. 13, New York. Oh, no way. 14, Miami. And 15, Atlanta. What do all of these things have in common? Though, when you look, they're all major cities. It's far more stressful. For all the great stuff, it's stressful living in a big city at times. It is. It's far more stressful. Plus, there tend to be left-leaning cities. And as we've known and we've talked about, that most, you know, left-leaning tends to be a little bit more emotional in their orientation and stuff. And they tend to seek help more, so they're probably going to be more honest about it comparatively. But I was talking to a young lady here. She's, she, her dream is to work at WFAN, which is New York's, I mean, New York's big sports station. And I said, do you miss New York? She goes, yeah. She goes, you know, and she's in Phoenix. We're a major market. It's a big city. I think it's the fifth largest metropolitan area in the country. And she says, eh, it's, it's no hustle bustle. It's boring. It's slow. Mm-mm. I mean, it is. I mean, in some ways. But, you know, but it's older. So when you get older, you enjoy the non-hustle and bustle. But with the hustle and bustle comes the stress. And you got to think about it, too. They're probably drinking lots of coffee. <laughs> They're a younger demographic, which... And when you look at the study, baby boomers, and eh, I got a lot to worry about. Gen X, eh, we're a little neurotic. But the younger generation, millennials, wow, crazy neurotic. Absolutely. They're super neurotic. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson shows your Twitter. Tweet at us. Text the program. Love hearing from you. I look at tonight. 
in Virginia, and I think, is it the bellwether kind of thing when it comes to this election that's going to point, hey, this is what's going to happen come, you know, 2022? I don't know what that's going to look like. Is this what's going to happen, uh, you know, for the rest of the time, even if the Democrats win tonight and, and, you know, everybody's focusing on this because this is like McAuliffe, who was, you know, is kind of a super dem former governor trying to get back his governorship in a place where Biden won it by almost 11 points last year. And you got Glenn Youngkin, who's kind of uh, uh, they're trying to tie him to Trump, but he's kind of giving everybody a roadmap of how you can take some of Trump's ideas, hold on to some of his support, and at the same time, keep him arms length away in a way that's not offensive to him. And at the same time, it's still out there. And and we'll see what that looks like. But you don't know, right? Like as bad as, and, and I explained this yesterday, as bad as Biden is right now and the perception of Biden, there's not a lot. There's some stuff he can be doing, and I don't think he's leading. Part of leading, and maybe the biggest part of leading, is leading in times. It's easy to lead when you're ahead, right? It's easy to be a leader when you're ahead. You get paid the big bucks to lead when things aren't going well. And right now, my biggest issue with Biden is he's not doing that kind of leading. He's not focusing on the things that matter. He's picking narrow paths and and, and which some of those things you have to deal with. But your biggest focus should be on things about what people are worried about. They're they're watching the Democrats fight amongst themselves over a giant spending bill when they're worried about spending themselves on dinner for Thanksgiving, whether or not they're going to see their family, what are they going to be able to do for Christmas, are they going to have a Christmas, is their business going to stay open through the new year? They're worried about that. And part of being a leader is in the tough times dealing with it. And that's been my biggest issue. But you don't know what's going to happen. I mean, tonight is going to be a, it is going to be a momentary uh-oh scenario if it's really close or the victory comes on the right side of the aisle. It'll be a wake-up call. But I go back last year. I always use sports as an analogy because sports, to me, is a great meritocracy. And, and you go back to last year and you look and, and, and you see what happens. I believe, if I'm right, the Buccaneers went into their bye week at 5-5. Five and five. They did not look like they're gangbusters. They did not look like they were going to win the championship. They looked like a team that was kind of muddling along, showing their moments here and there, but really didn't look like anything. And then they came out after their bye week, and they absolutely rolled the NFL all the way to the Super Bowl. I mean, just bye-bye. Bye-bye. They did. So what happens tonight in Virginia, if I'm a Democrat, I'm saying, look, guys, there's a long way to go. We could be talking about inflation dropping tremendously in the next six or seven months. We could be talking about schools being wide open. We could be talking about the fact that coronavirus is nearly gone and the economy is booming. We talk about all of those things six months from now. Yes, it could be a wake up call, but it doesn't have to be a death now. But a lot of that's going to have to do with whether or not the president himself gets out there and starts to show some leadership for the party as well as America. Or if he's just going to take a nap like he did yesterday at the climate summit, which I don't blame him for. 323-538-2423 at Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. Do you think you would go over and like put a blanket on him? (laughs) Told somebody, check and see if he's dead. Chad. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. Tweet, text, love hearing from you. You know what? The documentary we don't need, but we're going to get. We shall discuss Chad Benson Show. The Chad Benson Show, where we reach across the aisle and occasionally poke someone in the eye. Ah, yes. You guys didn't ask for it. In fact, nobody did. At all. But you're getting it, kids. You're getting it. It's the documentary that we've all been waiting to see. 
The New York Times and Hulu are turning a critical eye to the controversial 2004 Super Bowl halftime show with Malfunction, the dressing down of Janet Jackson. The documentary, dropping November 19th, will take a look at the so-called wardrobe malfunction, during which Justin Timberlake briefly exposed Jackson's breast on live TV. It all but derailed her career while his continued unaffected. The Times teamed with Hulu earlier this year for the Emmy-nominated doc Framing Britney Spears. Yeah. So, so there you go. So that's what you're going to get now. I'm like, do we really need that? Like, is that something that people are clamoring for? The way I look at this breakdown is pretty simple. They're going to look at him and say he's evil and bad and he got away. Remember, he's already apologized ahead. He already gave a bunch of apologies for things in the future that may get him in trouble. So he's apologized ahead for that. I don't know if this ruined her career. That's a hard stretch for me. To, to equate the, the boob incident. When did we become such namby-pambies? <laughs> when, did we, when did we become such, like, oh, my God, my child almost saw a nipple. When did that, like, people who post pictures breastfeeding their children in, the, in the, like, the most outrageous headline, she's a hero. What? <laughs> she's breastfeeding a child. It's not a hero. She's breastfeeding a child. Yes, but peop- people have a stigma around that. Who? Weirdos that don't, you know, I mean, uh, I've never under, like, because so, one person says something, then everybody has a stigma around it. Is that the way that works? Like, it's the way everybody feels you're going to take that one or two people? I mean, are there times and places that you should do certain things? Of course. But it's not really, you know. It's like, it's amazing. What if your child would have seen her boob? Good. Janet's a good-looking lady. That's not LaToya. You can see all of LaToya. <laughs> it's not very nice, Chad. We make fun of the Jacksons. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. Tweet at us. Uh, Bill Maher was right over the weekend talking about, like, you know, victims. And, like, we always use it. They're a hero. It's like. Those commercials where, you know, it's like we all stand together and they'd like a nurse and crossing her arms. And they show a guy like stacking like fruits, <laughs> like through the pandemic. I'm like the dude who jumps on a grenade, that guy's a hero. <laughs> but yeah, but this 23 year old is in perfect help. He stacked fruits the whole time the thing was going on. Mm-hmm, he did. But if you think that there's the same survival level. <laughs> Of potentially catching COVID and jumping on a, you know, grenade. I don't know if that's true. Maybe I'm wrong. I got to look at the numbers again. Maybe I'm wrong. There's so few people that can back me up on the grenade jumping side. Three two three five three eight twenty four twenty three at Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. Tweet at us. Big night in Virginia and across the country, and they're all. I'm already getting stuff tweeted at me about this is a text message I got that says you can't vote here, or this is the thing that you can and can't do, or this is. And I'm like, ah, this just feels like, feels like. We're going to see potentially another weird battle. Feels like it. I'd like to think that if, if either one of these guys lose, even if it's somewhat close, that they're probably a triggered automatic recount, but whoever loses, loses gracefully, says let's do and work what's for the best of Virginia and moves on. But in a day and age where politics is, even if you say that, doesn't mean other people won't fight on your behalf to try to prove a point that something was stolen from you. Because nobody loses anymore. It's just stolen. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson shows your Twitter, your Instagram, all of that stuff. Check us out across all social media. You guys have a blessed, wonderful rest of your Tuesday. Get out and vote if you're in a place where you get out and vote. But all of you, if you're going to vote for one thing, vote for tacos, baby. Night, night, Jack. This is the.
the Chad Benson Show.